Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for November 27th, 2020. It's the day after Thanksgiving, also known as Black Friday, but I know I'm not participating, and hopefully you aren't either. That uh, seems like an outmoded thing that we should probably just stop doing anyway, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, today is momentous in the sense that we are finishing the Vault certification videos. This is the last one. We are in Objective 10, which is all about the transit engine. So we're going to talk about the transit engine and encryption as a service and walk through some examples and that'll do it. That's it. it I, this is all going to be put in a playlist and you can watch from objective one all the way through 10. And hopefully that'll give you a good idea of what's going to be in the exam and get you prepared. If you feel like that's not enough, I am working very hard on my vault certification guide. I just finished objective six, which was the CLI. That was a monster one. I just pushed that out to those who had already purchased the guide. If you're interested, link is down in the description. That's all I have to say about that. Let's check in. How you doing? How was Friday? How was Thursday? How was, I mean, if you're in the US, how was Thanksgiving? Hopefully it went well for you uh, and you had some good food, some good times. Maybe got to see some family, maybe not too much of the family. I know that was kind of our case. We saw immediate family only and had a delicious smoked turkey, which I can still kind of smell wafting out from the fridge every time I open it. And I'm like, ah, I just want more smoked turkey. If you've never smoked a turkey, my goodness, it's probably the only legitimate way to eat turkey. So <laughs> let's talk about the transit engine. If you'll remember way back in Objective 5, and I'll throw a link somewhere uh, around there, in Objective 5, we defined what the transit engine is, and the transit engine basically exists to provide encryption as a service, and that is what Objective 10 actually is. The name of Objective 10 is Explain Encryption as a Service, which is weird because the sub-objectives are all about using the transit engine, encrypting and decrypting secrets, and rotating the encryption key. So you're not really explaining encryption as a service, but if we wanted to explain it, at its core, encryption as a service is just the idea that instead of taking on all the encryption responsibilities within your application or relying on an exterior portion like a database server to provide encryption services, instead you can leverage Vault to do the encryption of data as a service. That seems like fairly useful, right? So that's the idea behind encryption as a service. And the way that that's provided is through the transit engine. So why don't we start by looking at what the transit engine, uh, getting the transit engine enabled in our vault server, and then we'll walk through some examples of how you use it and what you can do. All right, so let me go ahead and share out the old screen here. And there we go. I already have my vault dev instance up and running. So if you are following along, you'll need to run vault server dash dev and get it going and, you know, log in and do the export of the vault address, environment variable, all that kind of good stuff. This should be second nature at this point. I'm not going to belabor it. Now, in order to enable the transit engine, all we have to do is do vault secrets enable transit. So remember, vault secrets is dealing with secrets engines. Enable enables a specific engine, and the engine we want to enable is transit. And for us, rather than try to put it on a custom path, we're just going to use the default path, which means it will be mounted at transit. Okay, so now we have our transit engine enabled. And that's there's not any real customized configuration for the transit engine itself. It has all the same common properties of the other secrets engines. But beyond that, it doesn't have like a slash config area where you configure stuff. If you want to see what areas are available, you can run vault path help transit, and that will give you basically uh, what is available beyond the transit path. So let's go ahead and run that. And it gives you a bunch of output here. So we can kind of start at the top. Let's take a look at what's interesting here. Probably let's start decrypt and encrypt. So you can do transit slash decrypt or transit slash encrypt if you want to decrypt or encrypt data. And then the name will be the name of the key that you've created that you wanted to use for the encryption. So that is basically the path there. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we get into the keys area. So there's a bunch of things that have to do with managing your encryption keys. So you can just reference the key directly. There's a config path after that key to configure properties of the key. There's also a rotate path, so you can rotate your key to a new value if you want to create a new version of that encryption key. And then finally, trim 
is to delete old versions of the key. So you can have multiple versions of the key. Trim is to clean up those older versions, but you first have to make those versions unavailable. And we'll see how we do that in a minute. Now, let's get back to the main thing, which is creating a key, because the next objective is to encrypt and decrypt data. We're going to need a key to do that with. So we're going to use the vault write command, and we're going to write a value to transit keys and then the name of the key, we'll call the key tacos. And because we're not supplying a value for this encryption key, we have to use the dash force option in there. And that tells it just generate a random key for us. Otherwise, we'd have to supply data in line. All right, so let's go ahead and copy that. We'll uh, paste it down here. And it will say, hey, successfully wrote data. You now have a key called tacos. If we do vault list transit keys, it will give us, give us a list of all keys that have been created. Right now, we just have one. We just got tacos. That's our key. Awesome. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Now we get in. Now we can see if we want to see like the properties of our new key, we can do vault read and then the path to the key. So let's do that. And we can see some of the properties that are associated with an encryption key. So interesting stuff here. Deletion allowed is false. So you can't delete this thing. You can't uh, back it up in plain text. It's not exportable. So that's all important stuff to know. And you can change these properties using a vault write and the path to the property. More important here, we have minimal, minim, min available version, min decryption version, and min encryption version. These three values here, those are important. And right now we can see that the latest version is one. So we only have one version of this key. The min available means all the versions are available because it's set to zero. The min decryption version is one, which is the only version that's available, and min encryption version is zero. So if we had multiple versions, you'd be able to use any version to encrypt data. You'd be able to use one or greater to decrypt data. And of the keys that are available, all versions are available because that's set to zero. Okay, so now we understand some of the properties that are in our key. How do we go about encrypting data? Okay, we're gonna use the vault write command and we're going to reference the key. So we're going to do transit. And in the path, instead of keys, we're going to put the path encrypt. So we're telling use the transit engine, I want you to encrypt data. And this is the key name that I want you to use. Now the data that you specify, you'll use the key plain text, that's the key, and then the value will be what you want encrypted. And that has to be base 64 encoded. Why does it have to be encoded? just so you don't have to deal with all kinds of weird things that can happen with special characters and special data and binary data. By base64 encoding it, you have a common encoding scheme which can then be encrypted. So we're gonna use the base64 command in Linux to encrypt this thing in base64, or not encrypt, encode it in base64 before it goes into a plain text value. So go ahead and grab this whole thing here, and I'll copy it, paste it down here, all right, so that worked and it returned a value here. And we'll notice this value has a few pieces to it. First, vault says that this thing was encrypted using vault. So we know that. And then there's a colon. And then V1 says what version of the key was used to encrypt this data. And then finally, the actual encrypted data itself is at the end. When you want to decrypt this data, you will need that entire ciphertext string to do so. Since we didn't specify a version to use for the encryption process, Vault just used the latest version of the key. In our case, there's only one, so it used version one. Now, the important thing to note is that Vault did not store this data anywhere. This encrypted data or the data that we submitted, it did the encryption operation, sent the result back, and that's it, that's gone. So if you do not capture this returned result, you don't have the encrypted data and there's no way to get it. You'd have to resubmit the data to have it encrypted again. So that's just important to know. When it's providing encryption to the service, it's not storing that data anywhere. Now, if we want to decrypt that information, we can use the decrypt fu function, which is transit slash decrypt slash name of the key you want to use to decrypt. And we're using the vault write command to do that. So we'll go ahead and grab this chunk of text here and paste it down here. And then in the ciphertext, we will take this entire block that we got before grab that and go ahead and paste it here. 
and hit enter. And there we go. It returned a response with the plain text value. Now, you know, this is still base 64 encoded. So if we want to get the original value back, we have to submit that back to base 64 with the dash D letting it know that we want to perform a D decode instead of encode operation. And we'll paste that string in there. And there we go. We get our original string back. We've successfully decrypted. And the reason we didn't have to specify a version for the decryption is because the version is in the ciphertext. That V1 there, that tells it what version to use. Okay, so that is the whole encryption decryption process. You can use transit decrypt or transit encrypt to encrypt and transit decrypt to decrypt. Okay, cool. Now, if we want to create additional versions of the keys, we can use the rotate portion of the key. So we saw that when we did path help, it's transit keys, tacos, the name of the key, and then rotate, and you use vault right to do that. And if we do that, and hit copy and paste down here. Oh, let me try that again. Apparently, my copying skills are not great. Oh, it tells us we have to use force because we're rotating the key. That means we're creating a new version of the key. And by default, it wants us to submit a value to use for that key. Since we didn't, it's going to throw an error. We have to put in dash force there. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Boom, we create a new version. And let's just do this a few times. All right, so we've rotated the key a bunch of times. And that's how you rotate a key in Transit Engine. It's not hard. <laughs> you just do slash rotate on the end of the name of the key, and it creates that. So let's take a look at the properties of our key again with vault read. If we paste that down here, now we can see the latest version is seven. We've got seven versions of this bad boy, but the min available version and the min decryption version and encryption version, those have all stayed the same. Those haven't changed. So if we try to uh, decrypt what we had submitted before with version one, that decryption operation still is successful. It, version one's still available of that key. We have no problems. Now let's set the minimum encryption version to three. And the way that we'll do that is by writing to the path transit keys tacos config. So if you want to config some stuff about this particular thing, that's how we would do it. And in fact, if we do vault path help and we do transit so if you forgot some of the values or you weren't sure what the value names were, we could do the full path here and just do path help. And it'll tell us what values are available to submit here. So name, min encryption version, min decryption version, exportable. There's a bunch of parameters in here that you can submit. The one that we want to do is we're going to set the min encryption version equal to three, which means if you try to encrypt with a version that is before version three, the encryption operation should fail. So let's go ahead and write that out. That is updated that value. And now let's try to run an encryption again. So we're doing encrypt, but this time we're gonna specify a key version in the arguments of two. Let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. All right, and error. And it tells us requested version for encryption is less than the minimum. We used version two, version three is the minimum. Let's go ahead and try the same operation, but this time we're using key version three and boom, there you go. Encryption, no problem. Now we already showed that we can decrypt what we had earlier. Now let's make a change to the minimum decryption version. We'll do version three. Go ahead and copy that down here. Now we've set the minimum decryption version to version three. And if we go up and we try to decrypt our version one encrypted string, we're gonna get an error and it's gonna say, I still have that signature version, but your policy says I can't decrypt using that version. So you'll have to go in and change the min decrypted version two allow at least version one so you can do the decryption. Now there's another value we saw in there that's min available version and you can't set it using the config com, using the config path. If you try that, it's just gonna fail. Why is that? It's because the way that you set the min available version is with the trim operation. And you can go through this and try it and see that it doesn't work. So let's try and run the trim operation. So what that does is it deletes any versions of the key prior to the version that you specify. So if you do the path is transit keys, taco trim, and then you specify the min available version you want, let's go ahead and run that. And we're going to try to set it to four and it's going to throw us an error. And the reason it's going to throw us an error is because the min available version has to be the same or lower 
than the min encryption version because otherwise you're deleting a key that you're saying is allowed to be used for encryption and decryption. That doesn't make any sense. So we can run the same command again and we'll set it to three. And what that means is version one and two of that key have now been deleted from the transit engine. They are no longer available. So I mean, use trim with care because if you delete old versions, you can't get them back. It's easier to just change the policy of the min enc min encrypted and decrypted allowed versions than doing this trim action. But there are obviously use cases for that. So I think that pretty much does it for the transit engine. We've run through all the different examples. We've seen how you can create encryption keys to use with the transit engine, how you can encrypt and decrypt data, how you can rotate the key to get a new version of the key, and then how you can manage some of the properties to set a min version for encryption and decryption, as well as delete old versions of the key. So that'll do it. That's everything for the vault certification wrapped up and tied with a bow. If you're feeling prepared, go out and try the exam. It's actually not that expensive. It's under $100, I think, for the exam. So it's not that bad. So definitely give it a try. Let me know how you do. Or if you're willing to wait a little bit, I'm planning to have the vault certification guide done by the end of January. So if you're willing to wait a little bit, you can purchase that guide and just wait till that's done. You can use that to study as well. That'll do it for me today. I hope that you have a fantastic weekend. And until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.